Hey guys, it's Anthony with The Rad Company and Levi. We are here today to film the final episode of our Subaru WRX STI series. <laughs> I know, they grow up so fast. Well guys, we've had a ton of fun building this car, but one thing is still ahead. The journey is not quite over yet because we're gonna be posting this car on bringatrailer.com. That's right, that means all of you at home will be able to bid on this vehicle if you want to own a little piece of uh, TRC history, yeah. should we say. And one of the great things is with bringatrailer.com, we are able to watch the entire thing live yeah. and really see when those bids come in, who's bidding for what, any comments, any of that stuff. So we really think this is going to be a really fun event and we are super excited to see what this thing goes for in the end. So whether you decide to bid or not bid, I'm sure you want to see a recap of everything we've done as well as go for a drive and show you how this car feels. All right, guys, so we are in the Subaru going for a nice, peaceful drive. Yeah. Subi bros. Subi bros. Feels good. Feels nice. good to be inside here. You know, it's kind of like being able to enjoy the fruits of all of our labor. Yeah. Being able to sit in here and be like, oh my gosh, everything works. I was just thinking while we were riding in this, I remember that first day Dane brought it back. Yeah. The first day yeah. we saw it and we were like, oh, that is, uh, it's not, it wasn't bad. Yeah. It was just, I couldn't believe how dirty it actually was. It was filthy in all the leaves, right? All the leaves. And the fact that Dane kept parking it where more leaves were falling on it. Yep. And he's like, we want to get it dirtier. And I said, no, we don't. We need to keep it clean. Keep it clean. He took it through that dirt field. Yeah, I said, is. Dane, what are you doing? You're putting more rock chips in it. He's he like, goes, it's okay. We're going to paint some things. Yeah, he goes, it's well, a rally no. car. We're like, just stop. Dane. But point was, it was fun to get it, to actually start going through it. Yep. My, I think my favorite part for all of us, I know, was uh, parts shopping. Yeah. Yeah. And figuring out what we were going to do, what was our build plan, uh, how crazy were we going to go on it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it really, I mean, it all stemmed from just one idea, right? Basically, I found this car online on not even like a normal listing. No. It was just kind of like a, like a, like a forum style listing, but without the forum. It was on Imgur, right? Mm -hmm. And we saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I want this car tried to talk to my wife about it she said Anthony no you don't need another car and I said all right and I came into work and I kind of explained to everybody what the deal was and then Dane pitched the idea to Jeff and Jeff's like okay you know we're down and before you know it he went down picked it up rallied it a little bit got yeah. a little bit got some more leaves in it um, and you know that was it and so once we had it in the media studio we we're able to really kind of walk around the car and kind of get a general analysis of what are we what are we getting ourselves into yeah and it was it was fun to learn too about yeah. the car because to find out that this color, the Java Black Pearl, which I knew very well, but in reality, I didn't know that it was only available for, for only this model year. Yeah. You know, so to find out that not only did we have a really nice car to work with being a low mileage STI, but to have one in a color combination that was already extremely rare yep. was even cooler. And to go, oh, and this is one of my favorite car colors yeah. On the, out Beautiful. of all the Subaru lines and any of the colors because of the fact that it's got almost four or five different colors in this paint. Green, brown, gold. reds, golds. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. So I knew that this was going to show us a lot of the ability of what we could bring back out of the paint. Yeah. And I did have to laugh when Dane told me that he had talked to the guy and the guy said that it had he had just had it detailed. Yeah. And I said, really? Nice. Oh. Yeah. I, the inside wasn't bad. No. The outside just looked like a coat of wax had been thrown on it yeah you know exactly. so it did definitely necessitated a lot of work yep. and i think the first thing before we could even start polishing was we had to start taking it apart yep exactly and so once we kind of got a general overview of the car we got to start getting our hands on it taking things apart and just assessing what we needed to order because a lot of things on this car we wanted to order things to replace because eventually subaru is going to discontinue a lot of these yeah, things they're just going to stop making it yep and so we wanted to start ordering things so we could just replace things rather than try to restore some of them just cost wise it made more sense just to buy new parts and trying to replace those heavy wear items whereas other areas it made sense to restore right so obviously the least amount of paint work that we have to go through the better so if we can do the best type of uh, paint correction possible and go through and save everything we can that's going to cut down a lot of the cost meaning that's more money that we can put into things like the interior or things like the upgrades on the car and so after tearing everything apart we're able to go through clean door panels clean the interior um and really I mean, things were scattered for quite yeah. some time. Having like, you know, once we figured out our game plan, when, you know, you kind of came up and said, hey, let's let's do OEM plus, yep. similar to what you did on your Evo. 
And all of us were like, yeah, okay, what do you, what do you have in mind? And you and Jimmy kind of put the plan together as to what, what the Fortunato coilovers, and then we contacted Scott about getting a set of wheels yep. and how what tires we were going to put on it. We knew, though, that we had these stock BBSs, yeah. and we were going to refinish those, mm -hmm. so that way we could keep them because the market on the original BBS, STIs, and Evo wheels is really good. So we probably could have sold them off and made a little money to go back into the build, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. To have an extra set that would go with the car would just bring the value up that much more. So that was really cool to have. Uh, the one thing that we kind of ran into that we didn't expect was how expensive that STI spoiler is. Yeah. And yeah. how once it's broken apart, it's very hard to put it all back together and make it yep. fit right. So we thought about taking it apart and having it resprayed. But after doing some research, we figured out that it was probably not the best thing to do and that we should just try to polish it out and fix it the best way we could and save it the best way we could. So yeah. that piece is a original STI spoiler that yep. has been just polished up and cleaned up. So, yep. uh, however, getting the paintwork done, we realized that the paint was very thin on the hood, had a lot of rock chips, mm -hmm. front bumper was peppered like crazy. It was, it was bad. Side yeah. skirts were worn from people getting in and out, yep. completely worn all, through the clear all coat. All the way through the paint, actually. Yeah down to bare plastic. So getting those things addressed to get new paint put on them. We also painted the deck lid because it had started to develop some rust because of the spoiler yeah. sitting on there for 16 years. So yep. uh, getting all those things fixed, we thought about doing the roof, but again, that would necessitate taking the whole car down, having a lot of extra overspray done that maybe we didn't need. And we thought we can polish it out. And then with the advent of some of the new PPF films, yep. having our buddy Steve wrap that in PPF gets people a lot longer life than had we put clear on top. Yeah, exactly. And so we had to go through a lot of that when we were, when we were kind of making the decision on what we were going to do exactly. Because like Levi said, you know, the goal was to go for OEM Plus. And so I thought to myself, if we're going to build an OEM Plus car, what things would I want to see that would sell me personally on wanting this car, right? Yeah. And like you mentioned, refinishing the BBS wheels, that was huge. Also having another option for a more aggressive set of wheels and tires with some good premium brands and that's what matters to me you know i know that this car is going to be worth so much more not having a cob access for it not coming with a vape not having the typical yeah. subaru stuff that people would actually desire it more in that sense and so we didn't modify it for power we didn't do anything like that we wanted to improve the suspension we wanted to improve the braking and we wanted to improve the overall look and that's the things that stand out to me the most because yeah. This is already a good looking car and it's already a fast car. It's a ton of fun. So how could we just increase that just a little bit, right? Right, without going overboard. And, and the other thing, having something like this that's pretty much unmolested. Yeah. Was extremely rare, but we knew that it would appeal to a larger group of folks. Like when we took it to the car show, there yeah. was all varying age groups going, oh my gosh, I wanna see that. Oh, that is the coolest car. When are you guys putting it up for sale? from teenagers all the way to 50, 60, 70 year old adults, yeah. looking at it going like, oh, that would be a fun car to own. So right there we knew, okay, we were on the right path with what we had built and we chose the right uh, things that we needed to do, the right additions, the right add-ons, yeah. so to speak. Well, Levi, really quick here. Yeah, where are we going? I'm gonna do, uh, you wanna turn off the AC for a second there? Just turn that off. So I felt like we have kind of an open straight here. Okay. It's relatively safe. Do a quick little pull just to kind of show people what kind of power we're working with. All right. Jeez, man. This car feels. Woo! <laughs> this car feels good. You know, we just got to the speed limit, nothing too crazy. But uh, AC back on now, right? There we go. Yeah, I got to turn the turbo boost on. That's when you know it's an old school car where you're like, hey, I got to turn off the AC. So getting back to a little bit of the basics here. So this Subaru has 65,000 miles on it. Um, it is a low mileage example, hands down. There's yeah. nobody that's going to argue that 65,000 miles isn't low for a 2004. And maintenance is up to date. Timing belt's been done. Uh, water pump's been done. Everything's been done on this car to make sure that it's good to go for another 60,000 miles. Um, one thing that we want to do before we send it off is change the oil on this thing, uh, but all the new brake fluids in and 
this car feels and drives great. I mean, it really does. It pulls like a freight train. It feels fantastic. It still feels very much like a new car. Yeah. And I think that with a couple of things that we did with the brakes, right, going with the new rotors, going with the new pads, and then also going with the suspension, it kind of refreshed everything. Because the thing that we noticed when we first took this car for a drive was that the suspension on this car, the stock suspension, was bad. You yeah. know, it, the guy that had owned it previously said that the struts were starting to blow out. They weren't feeling as good anymore. It didn't feel as so confidence inspiring. So being able to change those and then upgrading the brakes so they had no shutter, eliminated all that shutter, this thing stops on a dime as well. So um, a lot of the things that were the most important kind of, I guess, normal maintenance things were upgraded because right. why not upgrade them? Another thing I want to point out too is that on this drive, we do not have the aggressive setup of our wheels and tires. So if you noticed in the intro of this video, you probably saw the BBSs on the Continental mm -hmm. DWS, um, Extremes Contacts, I think of the WS06. Yep. And so they are the all seasons instead of the hexaforms or the r eights. Really the only reason we didn't want to throw on the r eights is because those tires are in fact so aggressive and so sticky that they kick up everything. Yeah. And being wider, they kick up everything over the side of the car. Before we sell this car and before it goes and bring a trailer, we want to make sure it stays in good shape. And so while the new owner may love the sticky tires and may love the look and feel of them, we might let them choose whether or not they want to run them or not. Yeah. Maybe when picking up this car because we don't want any more rock chips on this car and I'm sure you guys don't either. Yeah. When we plan to figure out how to polish this thing out. Yeah. You know, we got everything back from our friend Sean McNally, all the painted parts. And we had to figure out, okay, we've got all these painted parts that, that needed finished. Mm -hmm. Because when we talked to Sean, he was like, hey, I'm not going to finish them. It's kind of the hookup. Like, I'll spray them for you. You're going to have to finish them yourselves. Which really worked in our favor because we were able to reach out to a lot of our friends in the industry. Yeah. And we basically created a polishing party. Yeah, we did. And it was a, a week-long event where we brought everybody in to help us sand, polish, and get this thing coated and looking as awesome as it possibly could. And I honestly, I think that was the most fun I had. It was a blast. Was just to have everybody there, all of our friends, for an entire week, just messing around on a car. Like, yeah. I think that was the coolest thing about it. I think everybody else appreciated just how nice this car was. Right? Yeah. Because I think everybody was also under the impression of like, all right, guys, so, you know, how nice is this car? Is it worth flying out for? And we tell them, yes, this is worth flying out for. When you see it, yeah. you're not going to believe it. And you're going to also look forward to be able to, able to see the final results once everything gets polished and coated. And that was kind of the funnest time of this process, also yet the most stressful time, because a lot got done in such little time. Right. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the suspension. So I kind of touched up on that just a little bit. Um, but this stuff feels great. I think that the Fortune Autos were the way to go on this, especially going with these Swift upgrades on these, because it makes a huge difference. It yeah. really, really does. I've ridden in my friend Jason's Evo with the Fortune Autos, and he did not have the Swift upgrade. And it still felt rather, I don't know, it, it, it was too soft in my mm. opinion. It didn't feel as sporty. Um, but on these particular ones, the car just feels great. You know, being able to throw this thing into a corner and it just kind of takes it. It's awesome. Yeah. That feels great. It's nice and smooth and you know that you have confidence going into every corner because you have an all-wheel drive car. You have good tires on it. Even these Continentals that we have on here are great tires and they still grip fantastically. And so being able to just pull onto that steering wheel, turn where you want to go, gas it, follow through, it's nice. <laughs> it's definitely very nice. So figuring out how to clean it, we needed to, we really knew that we wanted to put on Bring a Trailer. We wanted to make sure it was a, the right car yep. to be on there. And one thing we were noticing was how filthy the undersides of a lot of these cars were. Yes. And we knew we had access to a dry ice blaster. Yep. And so we thought, let's take it in and just have them dry ice blast the underside. We thought we'd done a good job cleaning the engine, mm -hmm. but they decided to do the top of the engine for us for free. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Which said, was already pretty clean. Yeah. And it was already not bad. Took it to that next level. To yeah. where, like, all of us were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you made it that clean. And that's one thing that I think is going to make this car stand out is the ability, the fact that this entire thing, top to bottom, yep. is as clean as it physically, humanly can be for a 16 year old car. Oh, absolutely. They also hit all the inner fender wells. They took the wheels off, threw it on the lift. I mean, everything on the underside is just as nice as the outside looks. Yep. And that, that's huge. 
Yep, absolutely. And we had it coated, got uh, CSU, Crystal Serum Ultra put on. Thanks to Buck and Juan for coating that and getting it all done for us with the top coat of EXO. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is glossy and protected, which means it's gonna stay looking this nice for longer. Yep. Now, some people might be wondering what kind of mods are actually on this car, right? Because we've been kind of walking you through a lot of the process, a lot of the things that we did on this. Um, and really, in terms of modifications, if you were to put this onto a list, I would say upgraded brakes, upgraded suspension in terms of the coilovers. Um, the intake is still relatively stock. I think it has the lower bo box portion deleted, um, but the exhaust is stock as well. So if you don't want that crazy Subi rumble, if you don't want that loud car, you don't have to worry about it because this car really isn't that loud. Yeah. It has a very natural tone to it that is still very much stock. Yeah, it's a stock STI muffler and tip. Yep. And you can kind of hear right now in the car. It's basically all engine noise is what we're getting out of it. So yeah. you're not getting exhaust. And so down the road, if the new owner wants to upgrade the exhaust, they're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what though, Levi, am I a little upset that I didn't buy this car? I think yes. you are. I think you are. I am. Driving it right now, it's just one of those things where right when that turbo starts to pull you, you just think to yourself, dang, this would have been nice to drive every day. This would have made for a great daily driver. The mileage, um, being, the, being that it's stock and hasn't been beat on its entire life, I know that this car is going to continue to last and last and last. And, um, you know, I could have put my kids in the back of this thing. Yeah, I know, right? Right? Dang. Still chance. Still chance to buy it. There is. I still could. <laughs> yeah, so I think your wife will be a little upset when she realizes that, you know, instead of buying, like, a new truck, you bought yeah. a 17-year-old Subaru. I mean, you know, to each their own, though, yeah, right? right? 17 year old exactly. Subaru, new truck. I mean, honestly, I'd stick. I'd pick this car. Absolutely. Um, but touching up on a few more things before we hit back at the interior, a lot of the stuff has been kind of replaced and or fixed and cleaned up. And so we did a full interior detail on here, uh, which included rewrapping the steering wheel because it needed it. Uh, the leather that was remaining on there just wasn't in great shape. Um, and then other than that, though, we did have one of the driver's side seat uh, bolsters kind of reupholstered yeah. with the fabric stretched because there was a little bit of some uh, pilling and it just didn't literally look right. Um, and then besides that, though, some plastics have been replaced. Some of the door pulls are replaced um, just to make sure this thing looks new. But I will give it out to our resident nerds at the rag company, Gabe and Nick, because their special request was the stereo of all things. I know, they, right? They, they, had to, they, 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 they wanted were, a bump in the trunk. Yeah, we thought that was very strange. But, <laughs> hey, we let them do what they wanted. They yeah. picked out the stereo. They picked out the subwoofer. There was already a good set of speakers in the vehicle that were put in by the previous owner. Yeah. And it was already wired for a sub. So we yep. just ran a couple new wires, put in the sub. This thing is awesome. And yeah. I'm kind of jealous of the stereo now. Oh, it's awesome. That. And they were Very able to get nice. it on crutchfield.com and get everything that they needed for it. And everything fit perfectly and looks professional. Yeah, it looks it looks OEM plus exactly what we were going for. And um, it sounds great. I mean, everybody that sits in this car and we turn up the sub for them, they hear it, they love it. And I think that this particular in-dash unit that we chose um, is very clean as well, very OEM plus looking. Um, for people that you know see it for the first time, they actually think it's kind of like a stock setup because most people have seen this car in the studio yeah. think that this is a new car. They do. They oh, it's come funny. in and they say, wow, nice new car here. And we say, this is 17 years old. Yeah. I think that throws people off. Like we had people come in today taking a tour and yep. they were like what where where'd you guys get this thing and one of the guys knew what it was and he was even surprised that we even had one yep. that was this nice yep so that was really cool i think it's i think it's just fun to see plus at the end of the day it helps sell products yep. it helps us you know create marketing content and videos and all that stuff for folks at home to be able to watch and enjoy but hopefully someone gets this and they can have a lot of fun with it they can make a ton of memories in it and they can really just enjoy the car for what it is. Ah, well, that was fun, Anthony, you know? All wheel drive, 300 horsepower, six speed. It's a lot of power, a lot of fun. Really, what could you want more in a car? All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode and this year's series. That's it, it's over, we're done, we finished. We did it. Oh, actually, except, we are going to be live streaming the final day of the Bring a Trailer auction. Yes. Which means you do need to go to bringatrailer.com, set up an account solely so that you can comment and enjoy the banter and all that stuff. 
And hey, if you want to bid, that way you can bid as well. But we will be live streaming it on our channel so you guys can join us. Maybe we'll get some chips and salsa, Ooh, have some nice. great Pepsi products, enjoy ourselves and all of us together as one big group. The world will be watching to see what TRC Rex goes for. Yeah. And you know, that's just gonna be a beautiful thing. And hopefully it goes to somebody that's gonna appreciate it as much as we did, and hopefully it makes some room in the studio ah. where we can add something else, right? Maybe another project in the future. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. I, I think, think uh, so like a 2006 Hyundai Elantra would be a good next project. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard one. So anyways, guys, we'll see what comes in the future. As always, if you guys like this series, like this kind of content, make sure you give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rat Company. Okay.